वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग अवर सीरीज ऑन पेल्विक ऑर्गन प्रोलेप्स वेन वी टॉक अबाउट प्रोलेप्स वी मोस्ट ऑफ वी टॉक अबाउट द यूट्रस सो द सपोर्ट ऑफ यूट्रस और द सपोर्ट ऑफ सर्विक्स और द सपोर्ट ऑफ वजाइना आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू नो एंड लर्न हाउ दे एक्ट वॉट इज द मेकेनिज्म ऑफ देयर सपोर्ट एंड हाउ स्ट्रोंग दे आर so the first important thing about prolapse is the uterine angles the position of the uterus if you see this is the bladder this line is the vagina and this line is of the this is the cervix and this is the proper uterus the angle between this vagina and cervix is called antiversion it is around 90 degree so the antiversion means the angle between vagina axis of the vagina and long axis of the cervix so there is a v in antiversion and v for vagina the second angle is antiflexion it is the angle between the long axis of cervix and long axis of uterus it is 120 degrees so this is called antiflexion angle because of these two angles the uterus is situated in that position that the uterus cannot just prolapse so this angle basically maintains the position and supports the uterus in the position if you see the coronal section of the anatomy of the vagina and uterus you will see this kind of picture i have tried to make it very simple for your kind of knowledge this is the ischial bone both side here and this ischial bone you have two membranes two layers of membrane attached this two layers and these two layers are the layer of urogenital diaphragm okay urogenital diaphragm and in this two layers in between there is a space this is called deep perineal space and this thing out of the urogenital diaphragm this is called superficial perineal space so this is dpp this is spp so this my friend you can see is a long vagina and just vagina above and is related to the cervix of the uterus you can see the levator any muscle here which also supports the pelvic diaphragm that is urogenital diaphragm this is the colis fascia here this one is the colis fascia two muscles bulbo cavernus ischio cavernus muscles are here this is the obturator muscles here this is a supra levator space here so this is the basic anatomy of pelvis so dpp means deep perineal pouch spp means superficial perineal pouch if you see from above the three structure you can identify this is the bladder this is a cervix and this is a rectum these are the very strong supports of uterus this thing you can see here is a very important structure that supports the uterus this is called cervical ligament transverse cervical ligament or you call uh, you can call it cardinal ligament or it is also known as mckenrod's ligament it's the very very strong support this is the pubo cervical ligament and this is the utero sacral ligament so these three ligaments also called triradiate ligaments are the very important support for uterus now let's see the support of uterus in different classification we first we already have seen the mechanical supports which are the angle of antiversion which was 90 and angle of antiflexion which was 120 ligaments which supports the uterus 
already we have discussed cardinal ligament uterosacral ligament pubo cervical ligament these are the main support of ligament in descending orders round ligament is a secondary support we just maintain this those two angles that's why it's not the main support but yes it is a supportive support the broad ligament is not a actually a ligament in and it does not support the uterus for prevention of the prolapse the muscles we have already told levator any muscle which supports the urogenital diaphragm and pelvic diaphragm superficial and deep perineal muscles bulbospongineus ischiocavernous muscles all these muscles also support pelvic organs now they are uh, classification of the supports according to delancis level level 1 support that will be cardinal ligament and uterosacral ligament level 2 supports will be arcus tendinous fascia of the pelvis level 3 support will be perineal body and perineal muscles now if you see the uterus and the ligaments here uh, this is the uterus this my friend is the ovary this is the fallopian tube this is the ovarian ligament this is the suspensory ligament of ovary and this is my friend the round ligament which actually arises from the from the corno and actually the round ligament is a part of gubernaculum gubernaculum it means round ligament plus ovarian ligament so this round ligament goes through the inguinal canal and attaches to the labia majora so this is how round ligament keeps the angle of the uterus and supportively uh, supports the uterus now how prolapse happens the prolapse uh, is a not a process of day 1 or 2 it is a long process and it happens step by steps for years it starts with the loss of those angles antiversion anti flexion so the retroversion retroflex uterus is the first stage that uterus can be prolapsed due to lost elasticity and strength of ligaments and muscles due to aging and the hormone losses it happens generally after menopause and after multiple injuries in in uh, in uh, in view of multiple childbirth all these thing will predispose the patient to be pelvic organ prolapse now there are certain level of prolapse there are certain classification of prolapse the one classification here you can see here is a shows classification it is a very simple classification it, it was used since year so it is a very basic classification in first degree the cervix descend into vagina in the second degree cervix descend into the introitus and the third degree with the cervical descent outside the introitus so if you see the cervix coming out of the introitus that means it is a third degree prolapse if the cervix is descended from its normal site which was the ischial spine level you can see it is a second degree prolapse and uh if you see that the cervix is just down but not up to the introitus then is the first degree prolapse this source classification is used most commonly when you examine the patient in case of ps per speculum examination you can generally identify the stage or the degree of prolapse there is one more staging of prolapse which uses the reference point is as a hymen stage 1 that means the prolapse part is more than 1 cm above the hymen means 
that the prolapsed part is not just around within the 1 cm of the hymen. Stage 2 means it's around the 1 cm of hymen. So the prolapsed part can be in the range of 2 cm and the center of the range will be hymen. So just above 1 cm or below 1 cm in this range if we found the prolapsed part it is called sick stage of prolapse the third stage means if the prolapse part is below one centimeter of the hymen and the fourth part is a procedentia fourth stage is a complete prolapse of uterus outside the introitus so these are the stages of prolapse thank you friends